Hey there! Today I'm gonna be talking about Yukari Takeba. If you're new to the Persona fanbase, she's a piece of shit. Whoa! Whoa! Joke! That was a joke! She's the center of a lot of hate when it comes to Persona 3 specifically. Or so I thought. Nowadays I've seen the appreciation for this character amp up compared to when I first played the game. But when I first got into Persona 3, there was a significant demographic of people who just could not stand this character. Not even arguing that X-Girl is better, this wasn't a waifu war, this was just people claiming that Yukari was an insufferable bitch. But what about this character annoys people? How annoying are we talking here? We talking Karen levels of annoying? Well... Based on the results I've gathered from the advanced research technique of typing things into Google, I can generalize my findings as such. The closest things that I can think of that come to mind are her bickering with Junpei, her distrust of Mitsuru, and her broken relationship with her mother. I don't know why it's actually a concern that Yukari is mean to Junpei, so they say. You literally see this in every Persona game. No joke, even the old games. Characters bicker with each other. Why is it so bad here? To me, this just looks like normal banter between close friends. I'd also like everyone to keep in mind that there was one time where the joke was taken too far, and it was on Yukari's part. But what happened as a result? What about you, Junpei? Have you decided? No. What's the matter, scared? What the hell do you mean by that? You think this is a joke? Junpei, I... We're going to die! Of course I'm scared! You all need to wake up! This is death we're talking about here! That's what friends do, they push each other's buttons. Sometimes you go a bit too far, and sometimes people are gonna get emotional. But that's part of the friendship building process. Fucking sirens? Anyways, on her hostility towards Mitsuru, this is something that takes its roots right from the beginning of the game. At first, you hear Yukari making backhanded comments at things like Mitsuru's election as school overlord, I mean, student council president. She makes remarks on Caliber with, of course she got elected. No surprise, she dropped into our classroom just to say one thing and then dip. She obviously has better things to do. At first, these remarks sound like very shallow jealousy. And to be honest, if you were a girl that went to the same school as Mitsuru Kirijo, you'd be jealous too. She's got fanboys, she still has her dad, she's got money, she's got bigger titties. When the gang decide to go to the spooky school at night and split up as you do in that situation, <laughs> Yukari is clearly uncomfortable being stuck with Mitsuru. Shortly after Fuka joins the group, you start to understand that Yukari's hostility for Mitsuru is rooted in distrust of her intentions, not in jealousy. Yukari suspects that Mitsuru recruited Fuka only for her powers, and basically pressured her into joining. Like Mitsuru only sees her and everyone else as a means to an end. Yukari's suspicions are pushed even further when she suspects that Mitsuru knows more about the Dark Hour than she's letting on. Yukari basically forces it out of her because everyone deserved to know the truth. She even calls out Akihiko for staying quiet because he only cares about being in it for the hunt. As it turns out, she had it out for Kirija group as a whole because of the mysterious death of her father and then she calls you Mr. Perfect when you try to cheer her up. Now my question to you viewers is, was she wrong about any of the things she said? Was she wrong for calling out everyone on their bullshit? Even the Mr. Perfect line was on the nose, don't lie to me. You, you've been looking at that Max social link guide, haven't you? And finally, let's address her social link. She snaps at her mom. 
and rants about her. Twice, I think. Though, I question what kind of high schooler doesn't complain about their parents. Hell, adults still complain about their parents. It's pretty obvious that her mom is just trying to move on, but she doesn't quite realize that yet. The game doesn't really demand much of you, a lot of it is just being a good listener. Eventually, she comes to the conclusion herself that her mom hasn't simply just forgotten her father. The problem literally solves itself. And at the end of the game, if you finished her social link, she decides that she wants to go see her mother again and talk things out. But that's not the part people complain about. You just got baited. The part people really don't like about this social link is... The hug. I've heard all sorts of jargon about the social, cultural differences in Japan and how hugging is a more powerful, intimate action over there than it is in the West where we basically hug left and right just to greet each other. I believe the reason is a bit simpler than that. For context, basically Yukari got her wallet stolen by three thugs and when confronting them, they're about to do bad things to her, so what do you do as the protagonist? Beat the shit out of all three of them like it's nothing. Oh god, she really was right about that Mr. Perfect comment. After a situation like that, I don't think you'd really want anyone touching you, not even someone you really trust. Okay, it's time to tackle the big one. The thing that even I have trouble taking seriously. Okay, that's a lie. I hardly take anything in these games seriously. Welcome to the answer. You don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Yukari doesn't want to be here either. But in all seriousness, nobody wants to be in the situation they're in right now. Fighting shadows again after everything they just went through with Nyx. Something that I have not brought up at this point is Yukari's jealousy towards Aegis. The reason I waited until now to talk about it is because it's important to understanding Yukari's development in the answer too. So as it turns out, Yukari is jealous of someone. Not of Mitsuru, but of Aegis. Literally the day after you have your little tender moment with her, she sees this, you know, kinda good looking blonde chick macking on her dude. And you can immediately tell she ain't having it. Nobody in the classroom gave a shit about Aegis being clingy on the protagonist during her first day of school until Yukari made a big scene about it. They even make it a joke in the Q games. It's mostly just for harmless slapstick, but you'll see that it's gonna evolve into something a bit more serious than just a trivial love triangle. After the protagonist dies, Aegis inherits the wild card power from him. Aegis. She wasn't even there for the protagonist in the hospital. Right after she said several times that she would stay by his side. And then she gets his power. Does she even deserve it? And now this bitch ain't even sure if she wants to go save him? What? Get welded. You can kinda understand Yukari's attitude here throughout the answer, but it's not like she's the only one. Everyone else is trying to get out of there too, and yet it's only Yukari giving attitude. Her complaining and attitude aren't really a bad thing, it's just extremely odd how the answer goes out of its way to single out Yukari in pretty much every way possible. It's only her who wants to go back to the past to try and prevent the protagonist's death. It's literally her getting dogpiled by everyone, because she's just obviously wrong. The beef between Yukari and everyone else just feels like forced reality TV drama. One good point that someone on Reddit pointed out was that this was a good antithesis to most JRPGs where the protagonist risks it all for the girl and then the friends just go along with it, you know, because my friends are my power. This time it's the girl who wants to risk everything for the guy. Only this time, the friends are smart, so they all tell her that she's dumb. I think this was really poorly done in execution. I think this could have been done much better if the decision was actually something debatable, 
We all know Persona is capable of presenting more thought-provoking questions. The journey made you question whether it's better to ignore death and try to enjoy your life blissfully ignorant, or do you accept the reality of death and try to make the absolute most of your life? Persona 4 made you decide between taking matters into your own hands at the cost of seeing yourself turn into a bad guy, or sit idly by and let the real bad guy go. Persona 5 raised the question of whether it's better to face your problems head on in an unfair system where so many people are just inherently disadvantaged, or if you accept the ideal reality where no one gets hurt. Instead, what you end up with is everyone else looking miles more mature than Yukari, and Yukari looking miles more petty and stupider than she should be. Overall, I can see how people can come to not like this character. I really do. You can be annoyed by her even if you know why she acts the way she does. That's normal. It's okay to be fed up with someone's behavior regardless of whatever kind of issues they have. But here's the thing though. Most of the shit Yukari does isn't even that bad. Most of it is mildly annoying at best. You know who else gives you attitude throughout the game? Junpei. But people are way more receptive of him. That's not a bad thing, I think he's a good character. It just astounds me how people don't like seeing Yukari get moderately angry, while they're okay with characters like, say, Ryuji from Persona 5 screaming at everything all the time. People are like this all the time with characters who act like normal people their age. Uh, for example, I've never played Final Fantasy XIII, nor do I plan to, but from what I hear, People give Hope a lot of shit too, even though at the end of the day, he's just a kid, so of course he's gonna be a little whiny bitch. What a normal person would do in that situation and what they should be doing aren't necessarily equivalent. Personally, my theory is that people just aren't typically interested in seeing people tackle real-life problems like daddy issues. People prefer characters who tackle extraordinary problems, like getting back at your evil gym teacher for breaking your leg and ruining your track career and your reputation. I'm not saying stuff like that is bad, I'm just saying that's what people seem to prefer, and that's understandable. For some people, that's just a more interesting narrative. At the end of the day, I guess it just all comes down to your preferences, now don't it? My goal was never to change anyone's mind. I just wanted to get a better understanding of both sides. Knowing how bad I am at explaining my thoughts, everyone watching this is probably just more confused than enlightened on anything. If you like Yukari, that's fucking fine. You are allowed to like absolute garbage. God knows I do. If you can't stand her, you know, that's cool. I get that. But if you want to hear my final verdict that badly, you know, Yukari's alright.